Hi there, welcome to Colour Fit Chat number 12. This week, I'm absolutely honoured and humbled to have Professor Graham Close on the show. I think if you asked any performance practitioner to name their top three world-renowned sports nutritionists, Professor Close would definitely be on the list. A former Pro Rugby League player, Graham is now the Professor in Human Physiology at Liverpool John Moores, where he leads the Sports Nutrition Masters. He has published an astonishing over 120 papers and review articles, and current research areas include the effects of vitamin D on skeletal muscle function, the effects of weight making on health and performance, nutrition strategies to alleviate muscle soreness, and the metabolic and nutrition demands of elite rugby. Graham is accredited with the UK SEA, BASES and SENAR. He is the Deputy Chair of SENAR and the Fellow of BASES and the ECSS. Graham is the expert nutrition consultant to England Rugby, Aston Villa, the LTA and lead nutritionist for the European Golf Tour. As a result of all this, he regularly appears on TV and radio discussing nutrition for health and performance. In this show, Graham's going to talk about where future nutrition research should be directed, key skills you need as a nutritionist and the best areas to focus on and give some great advice not only to help us as professionals, but also in life. I know you're going to take absolutely loads from the show, and if you want to get involved, please join us on the Colour Fit Twitter chats Wednesdays from 7. Enjoy the show. Okay, so one of the questions I've been asked to have a look at is any interest in areas of future research and development? And I'm going to come at this from two very different perspectives. Um, the first thing is something I talk a lot to my team at, at Liverpool John Moles about, is that I think the challenge for the next decade is translation of what we already know rather than new things. So as academics, we're very good at finding the answers to unknown questions, but we're driven by the need to generate more grant income uh, and to publish the next paper, where perhaps we need to be just as well driven at trying to translate that research into applied practice. Uh, often we criticise people for misinterpreting our research uh, and, and maybe we should be more onus on ourselves to try harder to show how that research should be translated. So I actually think the, the delivery, uh, as well as the research and innovation, is going to be key over the next 10 years. The second part, which is from the opposite side of the spectrum, I think there's going to be a lot of interesting research over the next decade into personalised nutrition. And we're going to, I think we'll see a big emergence in the role of DNA testing to actually look at uh, individuals' genotype and how that's going to differ. Now, I know that at the moment there are uh, this is available, but my understanding is that we're not quite ready for that yet, and it's hard to really tie too much down to single uh, SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms. But I do think it's coming, and I think the days of working in a team sport and giving blanket advice to all the people in that team are going to be gone and it's going to be much more about sitting down and working out what's best for that as an individual. Another question I've been asked to look at tonight is what are the key skills that a sport nutritionist would need beyond theoretical uh, understanding? And before I give my answer to that, I want to backtrack a second and actually say please don't underestimate theoretical understanding. I, I see a lot of um, sport nutritionists these days who put a lot of emphasis on the applied skills, which is important, um, but actually take the eye off the ball when it comes to the theoretical understanding. Make sure you get the academic qualifications. You know, when it comes to sport nutrition, the exercise metabolism and biochemistry is absolutely fundamental. A lot of the unknown um, answers that we're looking for, we can make a good uh, educated guess by having a good background in metabolism and biochemistry. So please get that side right first. But to answer the question, what are the additional key skills? For me, it's the people skills. Mm -hmm. It's the ability to speak to people uh, and for people to warm to you as well as you warm to them. It's the ability to read people, to know when to back off or when to um, actually push on with the advice. It's to be able to work with the various personalities that you get, particularly within a sports team, where you'll have the real extrovert and introvert characters. Um, now, a lot of people, this comes natural to them. And if, if you're one of them people, great, well done, you're very fortunate. 
But a lot of people, it doesn't, you know, and I see people who think that because it's not natural to them, they're always going to struggle. And yes, it might not come naturally to you, but I passionately believe you can improve this. And one way to improve this is just by going out of your comfort zone, making more effort to speak to strangers, you know, get some work experience in a local amateur team and work with a variety of the characters from the introverts to the extroverts and practice them people skills. And once you combine that with your theoretical knowledge, I'm sure you're going to go on to have a, a wonderful career in sport nutrition. I think the hardest question I've been asked to, tonight is what advice would I give to my younger self? Um, and actually, I spent quite a bit of time thinking about this and I was almost going to back out of it because I, I'm, I'm not really a deep thinker. And then something just jumped to me. And the irony of the answer I'm going to give you is that I am somewhat uh, rushed for time tonight, sat in a, in a hotel room in between seven of my jobs. And, uh, and the answer is don't rush. Um, and what I mean by don't rush is that throughout our entire careers, I think we're always really excited about what comes next. So, you know, when we're doing our degree, we're, we're looking ahead to the master's. When we're doing the master's, we're looking ahead to the PhD. Uh, as soon as we finish the PhD, we want an academic post. Um, I see a lot of my PhD students in the middle of a PhD wanting in a, like a head of nutrition role in a, in a big organisation. And um, I, I think that sometimes looking ahead too much means that we stop to, en to reflect and we stop to enjoy the journey. And, you know, I'm here to tell you that the, the pot of gold isn't always at the end of that rainbow. And, and when you get to where you want to be, so, you know, when I got to professor, I thought, you would feel different or you know when I got the job working in, in a, an elite department you you know that would be magical but you're still looking for what's next and you're still looking for that, that next challenge and there's a lot of far more intelligent people than me have said that the chase is better than the catch or, or the journey is better than the destination and I wasn't really sure what that meant until recently uh, and then it's begun to dawn on me that actually you know, the challenge is in pushing to get to that next level. And what we should be doing is enjoying that journey. We shouldn't be beating ourselves up that we're not as progressed as somebody else in our field. So take time, uh, reflect on how well you're doing. Um, yes, set yourself goals, but don't beat yourself up if you're not in the position you want to be. Enjoy where you are and enjoy the moment. The final question that I've been asked to look at tonight is, where do I think you get the biggest bang for buck uh, when it comes to sport nutrition? Uh, and I guess my answer to this could surprise a few people because, you know, people, you know, before I spoke about genetics and we might be talking about testing, intolerances, all, all the real novel um, and, dare I say, sexy parts of sport nutrition. However, what I'm going to say is I think it's the basics. It's getting the real fundamentals right of all the elite sporting teams that I've worked in, there hasn't been one where I've not thought we can make some big gains just by getting the food right. Um, I would say most of the teams have got quite a, a high supplement culture and think that looking for little supplements that may or may not improve cognitive function or something that a supplement that may help inflammation, these are the keys to actually sport nutrition, where in reality... You know, this really is the icing on the cake. And to continue with that metaphor, often the cake isn't even baked before people are trying to put the icing upon it. So at Liverpool John Moores University, we, we speak a lot to our students about the three T's of nutrition. Getting the timing of your nutrition right, getting the type of food right, and getting the total amount of food right. So once we've got the three T's in position and our athletes understand the difference between carbohydrates, fats, proteins... Uh, and the timing around exercise. We will then assess have they got the basic skills that they need. So have they got the ability to go shopping, do, you know, obviously got the ability to go shopping, but make the right choices when they go shopping. Um, can they prepare basic meals? If not, have they got a support system uh, around them? Do they know how to fuel for performance? Do they know about carbohydrate loading? Do they know uh, carbohydrate periodization? Uh, they know how to maximise recovery and, and hydration and what to do before, during and after exercise. 
And I always find that the biggest bang for the buck just comes from getting the basics spot on. So a big thanks goes out to Graham there for an amazing show that reflected his knowledge, experience and humility. The translation of research to practice is key and one of the main failings I see with relatively new nutritionists. There needs to be a greater focus on foods and meals rather than isolated nutrients. How to shape meals to be in the right ballpark rather than stale things like grams per kilogram. How do you shop and prepare meals and how do you build good habits? Graham also advocates a food first approach for getting the most bang for your buck. Bake the cake first with total timing and type of food before putting the cherry on the top with things like supplements. A sound theoretical understanding is key to any science-based practice. If you know why things are happening, it allows you to be innovative and predictive. We work in a people business, so people skills are key. You don't need to be an extrovert, just don't be a wallflower and try to get experience whenever you can. Graham finished with some great professional and life advice. The current world of social media comparison can leave us all feeling a little inadequate to our peers. But everyone feels like this, and often great achievements come at a heavy price. So enjoy the ride, invest in the process and the people around you, no matter what you're doing to get the best of any situation. So thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe to the Colour Fit Chat podcast and leave a review. I hope to catch you next week when we have another amazing guest.